QuickBooks Online 2022. Create reports after second month of data input. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file that we set up with a 30-day free trial. Holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to that 125%. We're currently in the home page, otherwise known as the Get Things Done page. If you wanted a change to the accounting view, it is something you can do by going to the cog up top and switching to the accounting view down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views, either here or by jumping over to the sample company file that is currently in the accounting view. Going back to our practice file, we're gonna open up some reports or tabs that we can put reports in. Right clicking on the tab up top to do so and duplicating it. Back to the tab to the left, right clicking on it again and duplicating it again. Back to the tab to the left one more time, right clicking and duplicating another time. As that is thinking, let's see where the reports are located in the accounting view. They're currently simply in the left-hand side where it says reports. If we go back on over to the business view, it's a little bit deeper down of a dive, but not too bad. It's in the business overview. We're opening up one of the faves, that being the big balance sheet. Now, before we do this, however, note that we're trying to think about this time, the use of these reports, not for internal purposes, but for external purposes, meaning we've done the data input. We wanna be providing these reports to possibly the client at the end of the period. And so we want to customize these reports for external use, which might be a little bit different than how we would format them for internal use. And the prior month, we set up our customized reports over here so that we've got our standard balance sheet, our income statement, our trial balance, and our transaction list by date. We're gonna do a little bit of a variant for the current month. And so we're gonna start off with the standard balance sheet just so we can do some customizations again and possibly add some kind of comparative information that you might do in say the second month of operation. So we'll do something a little bit different here, but notice once we have some standardizations for the external reports, what we want to be giving to the clients on a periodic basis, we can basically then open up the same reports and format them in a similar way, either then emailing them to them, or we could use the manage reports area on the right hand side to help us to put these reports into a format that could be nice to give to the clients as well. Remember, this is the product that we're giving to assure a client, for example, that we're doing the work that needs to be done. So the numbers not only need to be right, we want to present it in a way that the client feels comfortable. So we'd like to present it or give it to them, give enough reports that they feel like the work is being done competently, which it should be. And we can, we can also have a, a format so you know it looks nice when we give it to them so we can email it to them we can use this item we can send we can zip up a pdf or we can basically use the excel worksheet to make one pdf file we'll take a look at some of those methods uh, at this point in time for the second month so i'm going to actually start this out again from the standard point and let's first start off instead of having the balance sheet the normal balance sheet let's go to the balance sheet summary which might be the one that you wanna put on top of your information because the balance sheet summary is gonna have the least like intimidating type of report and then have the more longer reports possibly behind it. So I'm gonna start with the balance sheet summary report this time. And uh, then on the next report, let's open up another one and go to our uh, business overview again and then go into the reports. And then I'm gonna open up a standard balance sheet this time I'm going to try to do a comparative balance sheet for the second for the second report and then on the third report let's go to the third tab and then go to the business overview we might also want a vertical analysis balance sheet so i'm going to open up another balance sheet with a vertical analysis balance sheet and then i'm going to go to the income statement reports we're going to do a couple things on the income statement so right right click on the tab up top again and open up another one and this time Let's go into the reports down below. And let's say that, uh, that we're gonna open up some income statement reports. So I'm gonna go to a profit and loss report. I'm gonna imagine that I have a comparative profit and loss report, which is gonna be month one, month two, and the total. And then I'm gonna make another profit and loss report, right-clicking and duplicate again. 
which will be a difference profit and loss report, month one minus month two, the difference. Let's open up that report. And so I'm gonna go into this one and say another profit and loss. And then I might wanna make a vertical analysis profit and loss, have a vertical percentage analysis, right clicking and duplicating that. I'm gonna make all those from the profit and loss reports. So I'm gonna go down to the profit and loss again and try to open that one. And I'm gonna do this fairly quickly because we've seen this in the past, but I'm gonna make another profit and loss. Then I want a transaction report and a trial balance report. So I'm gonna open up two more tabs, duplicate a tab again. This time I wanna take a look at the trial balance, which is more of an internal report, but a great report for working your numbers. So this might not be one you would actually give externally, but I think it's a great one for our practice problem. Trial balance. And then I'm gonna do one more, right click and duplicate another time. This is gonna be the transaction detail by date report. So we're gonna to go to the reports to the left and we're gonna type in up top transaction detail by date report, transaction list by date. I think that's the one. That's the one we want, isn't it? It is. Okay, so let's go back to the first tab and just do some formatting. So I'm gonna imagine the balance sheet is gonna be first. I'm gonna put this in, a, save this in another area for the, for, so that we can see it. And I'm gonna edit it up top. So I'm gonna say customize and do our standard editing. Let's make the end point just for the end of February now, which is gonna be 022822. So we got a date that's gonna be properly formatted. Put the brackets around it, no pennies, cause it's external. I'm gonna make the negative numbers red on the header and footer. I'm gonna get rid of the date, the time, the report basis on the footer down below. And so that looks pretty good. Let's save that. And so that looks pretty good. Nice basic report that shouldn't be too intimidating to kind of lead off with. So then I might then say, let's go ahead and save the customization here. I'm gonna make a new category or group to save it in. I'm gonna say this is a month comparison reports month comparison reports so we have the side by sides that will be included in month two adding it and then i'm going to call it i'm going to put a number one in front of it so that when it orders it in my report category it's going to put this one first not in alphabetical order so i'm going to save that let's save that one now if i went back to the first tab for example and went into my reports on the left hand side business overview reports in my custom area, I should have another one down here with the with the reports. This is gonna be month comparison uh, reports. Here it is right there, the balance sheet. So let's go to the second tab and do the second one. Closing the hamburger. Now this one, I'm gonna make a basically a side-by-side -side report for the balance sheet. Uh, there's a couple different ways we could do that. I could say this is gonna go from 0101 Two two to O two twenty eight two two, and then I could say that I want this to be in months, and then run it that way. That's one way I could do it. And so I got the side by side. Notice there's no total over here because these are as of a point in time. That could be quite useful if you have like three months or a quarter that you want to be running a report for. But you might also want a difference column. So I I would rather see it in terms of a difference column. So instead of doing it that way. I'm gonna say, let's make this from 01, let's say 020122. And then I wanna bring this back to the totals. And then on the periods drop down, I'm gonna say that we want the uh, previous period, which is gonna be uh, 0101 for January. And then I want the uh, change of the dollars and change of the percent. So we've seen this in the past. I know I'm doing this kind of quickly, but we're, we've seen that we've worked with reports in the past. So there it is. And there's now we've got the February up first, the second month, then January, then the change, and then the percentage. This can be more of an intimidating report, but it gives you the more detail as well as the month by month comparison, which can be quite nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and customize this one with our standard customization. So I'm gonna say, let's make this a bracketed red without the pennies. And then on the headers and the footers, I'd like to change the name here to a comparative balance sheet. 
let's call it a comparative balance sheet. And then the report period might not be as useful because now I've got two dates. So I'm gonna re remove the report period and then the footer date time report basis. I'm going to remove those and run it. So there we have it. So now it's a little bit more cleaner looking, looks good. I'm gonna save this one then. I'm gonna go up top and say, let's, let's customize it or let's save customization save customization and i'm just going to put a two in front of this one so it orders it as the second report month comparison reports the one we just set up and save that one let's go to the tab to the right so this time i've got another balance sheet which i might want to do a vertical analysis in so i'm going to change the end date again which is going to be 022822 we can run this one and this time i'm going to go to the drop down here the second drop down and i want to say that we want to see percents of the percent of the column i believe right percent of the column run it and so now we've got our percentages let's just double check that we got the right item here with the good old calculator so we we then are saying okay if, if i take my current assets are at the 16746 divided by the total assets, which are the 230366.56, we get that 77.27, 7 right? That's what we want. So now we've got our vertical analysis report. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and change it up top on this one. We'll customize this one, doing some customization on it. So we're gonna say no pennies. Let's make the brackets around the negatives and red. Let's do the header and footer and call this balance sheet vertical analysis. Oh, I spelled analysis right the first time. And then remove the date, prepare time report and so on on the footer, saving that one. So that looks pretty good, I think. Let's go ahead and save that customization this is vertical analysis. Am I on number four is now the report I'm on, I believe. Let me check. I forgot. Let's run. I'm going to refresh the page on the left so I can see like what number I'm on. I could have just counted the tabs. That would have been easier, wouldn't it? I don't know. I'm on number three. See, good thing I checked because I did this balance sheet. We did this, which is the comparative and now we're on the vertical analysis. Number three, don't get ahead of yourself. You're on number three and there we go. So then this is gonna go into the month comparison report. So there we have that. Let's save it. Let's save it. And then I'm gonna to go to the tab to the right and now we're on the income statement reports. So for the income statement reports, we might want to do a couple comparative reports. Now you might have like a general income statement that you might collapse on to start with, for example, and that will show a lot smaller of an income statement because your items down below are gonna have less items. You also might wanna show an income statement for January and one for February, but you can kind of capture that more detailed information with a comparative income statement. So let's let's try to do this one first. Let's do this this one, this collapsed income statement, which I can call basically an income statement summary report. So let's go up top and say, let's do a customization on this one. Let's do the end date, which would be 022822 and run it. So there we have it. So now we've got the collapsed income statement. And so let's go ahead and uh, customize it. We're gonna say we want Get the pennies out of there, brackets around the negatives, redify them. And then on the header and footer, I'm gonna call it instead of a profit and loss, let's call it an income statement summary report. And so get rid of the footers, get, get that stuff off of the foot. I don't like when they got that tattoo on my foot. So we're gonna go up top and then save the customization save the customization now we're on number four number four this is going into the month end reports save it so that looks good and then on the next one 
Let's do an, an expanded income statement now. So now it's not collapsed, ex expanded, and then add the comparison along with it. So there's two ways we can do the comparison. We only have two months. We can take the difference between the two or we can take the sum of the two. Let's do both of those methods, January through 022822. And I'm gonna say now I wanna look at the months. Take a look at the months and then run it. So that gives me then January and February and then the total. So now I get the two months broken out and I get the sum of the two of them in the expanded version which is which is nice so so now i don't have to print out two separate you know income statements for january and february possibly i could do this report although this report is much more likely to overwhelm someone with all the detail that's going to be involved in it so that's going to be the pros and the cons as you're thinking about how you're going to group these things for any particular client let's go ahead and customize it so i'm going to say without sense bracketed numbers red affide and then we're gonna go down to the header and footer. We're gonna say, this is gonna be, let's call it an income statement, statement by month report. Income statement by month. Let's get rid of the ending report period because uh, we, that we have two months and then I'll get rid of the stuff on my foot. Get that writing off of my foot. Stop writing on my foot. So then we've got January and February and then the total that looks good so let's save the customization i'm doing i know i'm doing this quickly we but hopefully i'm not making any errors but let's save it we're going to say this is number what are we on one two three four number five i think number five report putting that into our month comparison reports save it okay so then we're gonna go tab to the right. Let's do this again. Another income statement, our starting point. It's not collapsed. This time I wanna take the difference between the two months. And notice that this first one would work as well if you had multiple months, like three months, four months, the year to date on a monthly basis. This one I do a comparison, which you can only do with two months, which you might do from the prior month, or you might do like a this year to date versus the last year to date or so on. So there's so many different combinations you can do once you have multiple periods of data <laughs> that you're going to be working with. So in any case, we're going to say, let's do this one for 020122 to 022822. And then I want to change this item to say, I want to compare it to the previous period, which is January and the dollar change and the percent change. So there we got, there's our comparative report. I've seen that report before. That's a comparative report, taking the difference instead of the total. So let's go ahead and, and uh, customize that one without the pennies, bracketed, red, and then we're gonna go down to the header and footer, and we're gonna call this a comparative, compar comparative income statement. Meant. Statement. There we go. And then get rid of the stuff on the foot get that stuff off of the foot and so there we have it okay let's let's save the customization on that one i'm on one two three four five number six save the customization number six comparative income statement we're going to put that into our month uh, comparison group and save it let's go to the tab to the right so now I want to make one more tab with a vertical analysis. I'm going to right click on this again, duplicate, and then we might want a vertical analysis uh, statement. So let's do that one. So I'm going to go to the reports and say, let's say we want now another income statement, standard, starting with the standard income statement or PNL. And I'm going to say this time, this time what I want is to go from 01. 0122 to 123122. And note that you could even get a little bit more, more detailed with a vertical analysis by showing it kind of like a, on a month by month breakout, months breakout, and then run that. So now we've got, uh, hold on a sec, let's end it on 022822, run it. So now we've got our two months and the total, and then apply the vertical analysis. So which way I can hit the drop down and say, I want to now do the percent of income, which is typically how we apply out everything being compared to the income statement and run it. 
And so now, now you've got January's vertical analysis, February's vertical analysis, and the total of January and February vertical analysis. Again, a lot of information on one report here, uh, so you can you save time that way instead of giving a January vertical analysis, February, and then the total. But also could be overwhelming when you if you just give this to somebody, uh, it could be both impressive and overwhelming, right? And <laughs> You know, so it's just you got to weigh the pros and cons. So we're going to say let's customize this thing, and so we're going to say that this is without the pennies, brackets, redify, and then on the header and footer, we're going to call this an income statement vertical analysis 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 and then get rid of the date and the time and the report basis on it, saving it, running it. So there we go. Okay, and then I'm on tab one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm on now, let's, let's save the customization. I'm on number seven, I think. I'm not sure, but let's save it anyways. And then I'm gonna go tab to the right this is our trusty trial balance. So let's go up top here and do some customizations for it. I'm going to make this from 010122 to 022822. So this will be for the two month period. I'm not going to do any fancy comparisons or anything with it. Straight trial balance. Let's do some customization. And I'm not going to get rid of the pennies. I'll make the negative numbers bracketed in red. And, but we won't have any because it's debits and credits. And then it's just going to be the good old trial balance. So nothing fancy. We can get rid of the footer stuff and run that and let's just save that as one two three four five six seven eight number eight report save customization number eight's just the trusty trial balance plain plain old plain old trial balance but one of the greats one of the greats go into the tab to the right and now closing up the hamburger this is our transaction list so january through february 022822 this would be for the two month time period that we have done but if you're now checking your work which is this is a great report to check your work if you're if you were on balance at the end of january then we can say that everything that happened in february should be if you did everything that happened in february properly and we had the same beginning balances at the end of january we should be at the same end point which would be the same balance sheet and income statement numbers. So let's go ahead and just run this for February. This is going to be 02, uh, 0122, and then run it. So this is this is the report which you could, in practice, kind of base your your billing process on. Possibly, you might try to count how many transactions you have. Try to set up a billing system that's based on how many transactions that you have entered. And you can count the transactions by exporting this to Excel, for example, and using a count function or some function to just count the number of transactions. And it could be a fairly easy and more kind of uh, solid way to bill people because then they can actually see they, it's not just an arbitrary, well, you worked so many hours and you can't really verify that. And it could be inconsistent from period to period. So this is one way as an accountant or bookkeeping system, you might use this. You might also use it to track for example, uh, your employee's work to see how much stuff they did and basically try to figure out how much time it's taking to do certain types of transactions. In our context, we can then take a look at where we stood at the beginning of the month, which was in January, if your trial balance tied out at the end of January, and then check all the activity that we have entered thus far for February, which you could go in here and check number by number on the right hand side, which I know is tedious but you could go through here and check out each of the transactions. And if there's something on our side here that's not on your side, you might try a date range issue if you're working this problem at some later point in time. It's quite possible that you entered something after February, which if that's the case, you can drill down on it and then uh, change the date and bring it back into the range that we are working in for the practice problem. If it's on if it's on your report but not on our report it's possibly got miscategorized or or was entered twice somehow and again you can go in drill down to the source document and adjust that 
So this report you'll note is by is by date. So we have the actual transactions by date. Each of these line items represent at least two accounts that are impacted. Note that the forms here will tell you kind of the primary account that they're going to put here in the account. So a check form is going to the cash or checking account, deposit cash or checking account. Whereas if you're talking about a purchase order, accounts payable, the sales, uh, the sales receipt, they're, they're going to say that's going to be the payment to deposit, which is that undeposited fund kind of account. And then the other side will be here in the split. Notice that the split will only show if there's only one other account impacted. If there's multiple other accounts impacted, that's when you get the split thing because there's multiple other accounts. If you want to see more detail of that, you could drill down on it or you can go to the transaction to the journal report, which will show everything in terms of journal entries showing all the detail in that format. So there is there is this report. So once you check the numbers, you also want to check the dates and then the transaction type. So if the transaction type lines up and your numbers on the right side line up, then uh, you should be at the same ending point that we are at if we started uh, at the same at the same point, which was the same balances at on the trial balance at the end of January. OK, let's do some customizations here. I'm going to go to customize. We're going to say negative numbers. I'll be bracketed. I'll keep the pennies on this one so we could get a little bit more detail. Header and footer. We'll just get rid of the footers and let's save that. Run it. And then I'm going to save this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Saving the customization. Number nine. And then we'll put it in the month reports. Save it. So now we've got all of this stuff. If I go back to the first tab, hopefully in this drop down, I'm going to refresh the pane. So refreshing it, I'm under the reports. And now I'm looking at the customized reports. And, and you can see again, just this is just an example of how many reports and just a small example of how many combinations of reports you can work with, even just looking at the common couple of reports uh, when, you have, when you have multiple periods that are going to be in place here. Notice that I put seven. This one uh, didn't go in the proper area. Let's, let's say that I want this to be pulled down. So I'll do it this way. I'm going to open this one up on seven. And then I'm going to save it again. I'm going to save customization, but I want it to go into this one, saving that there. And then if I go back, if I go back and close this back out, go back to my reports and then eight right there, I'm going to go into it. And I'm going to say, I want to put that in the proper category by saying saving customization and put it into my category and save it. Okay. Now, if I go back to the reports, custom reports, we've got our reports lined up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine reports. And so next time we'll go, in, we'll go into these reports and we'll save them multiple different ways. We'll save them as a PDF, put them in a zipped file. We'll export them to Excel, use Excel to create one PDF file. And note, you can also use these reports to create your management reports if that's the method that you want to present them to your clients. Note it can be quite tedious to set up these reports, but once set up, then you can save them in this way and hopefully you can go into them quite easily from period to period and generate the reports in the formats you want them to be for external reporting purposes, possibly also fairly easily designate that job to somebody else to simply generate the reports and hopefully just change the date ranges to be able to provide them to clients on a periodic basis, possibly monthly, quarterly, yearly.